Okay, so in the last video, we concluded at the end that the velocity at the center of mass is a constant uh, because we observed that it didn't seem to be changing. It was going at a constant speed of two, of two meters per second. So we have um, an imaginary object, the center of mass, and it's moving in a straight line at a constant speed. We've talked before about what it means when an object is moving in a straight line at a constant speed. Uh, what does it mean when an object is moving in a straight line at a constant speed? Think about that for a second. Maybe pause it. So it's a constant. The velocity is a constant. That means uh, its momentum isn't changing. So velocity is center mass. Uh, doesn't change. No change. That means um, that it is isolated. That means its momentum isn't changing. This is all Newton's first law. If a system is isolated, there is no input or output of momentum into the system, which means that the system as a whole can't change its total momentum. That means the center of mass can't change what it's doing. So we can kind of recast what we've said before about Newton's first law to be something about, to be making a statement about the center of mass. It's the center of mass that's not changing. The things inside the system Objects A and B can change when they collide, and they do, although they change in a particular way, so their changes are equal and opposite. But the center of mass keeps doing what it was doing, going at two meters per second. Okay, so a natural question that you might ask uh, at this point, and you probably will, is, is there a shortcut? Is there some way we could have figured out what that velocity of the center of mass was without having to calculate the position of object A several times and the position of object B several times and then doing that weighted average thing? And the answer is yes, there is a shortcut. And it comes from the idea that the, it's, it's about the momentum of the whole system. The delta P of the system isn't changing, which we know. It's 10. Um, so let's think of the, the system being the total mass of the system and the velocity of the center of mass being the velocity of the system. And we can write an equation for the momentum of the center of mass is the mass of the center of mass times the velocity of the center of mass. That kind of makes sense, whatever that is. Well, the momentum of the center of mass is the total momentum of the system. That's P total. And the mass of the center of mass is the total mass of the system. And the velocity of the center of mass is the velocity of the center of mass. It doesn't really exactly make sense to say the total velocity, but center of mass velocity does make sense. So if I rearrange that, I get that the velocity of the center of mass is the total momentum divided by the total mass. Let me move that up so you can see it. Um, what was the total momentum of the system? It was 10. What's the total mass of the system? it was five. So 10 over five is two meters per second. We can even put the units in so you can see it really explicitly. Kilogram meters per second, I hat over kilograms. And those units cancel out and you get a velocity. So the shortcut is you figure out the total momentum of the system divided by the total mass of the system, and you get the velocity of the center of mass. All right, let's go back to the spreadsheet. So over here, this is the before table. So you can see the total momentum of the system was 10, and the total mass of the system is 5. So I take 10 divided by 5, I get the velocity of the center of mass, and I have a cell that calculates that right here. It's 2. And you can see, if you look at um, the calculation, it's taking D5 divided by D3. D5 was the total momentum. D3 was the total mass. So that's the velocity of center mass. We'll talk about this stuff in a few minutes. 
so we'll leave that aside. So remember, and you can see there's, there's a hint, the center of mass reference frame calculation. What's the center of mass reference frame? Well, the center of mass reference frame is the reference frame where the center of mass isn't moving. How fast do you need to go so that in your reference frame, the center of mass doesn't move? You go the same speed as the center of mass. So if you were moving at two meters per second, let's go back to the whiteboard for a second. Go back to the whiteboard and scroll this up. If you were moving at two meters per second alongside that center of mass, you would say the center of mass isn't moving. And these two carts are moving, uh, well, this one would end up being slower and this one would end up being faster in order to make that work out. So we can translate our reference frame to one where the center of mass isn't moving by subtracting those two meters per second from each of these velocities. So I'm gonna subtract two from that eight and subtract two from the negative two, and that will give me um, six meters per second for object A and negative four meters per second for object B. So object A seems to be going too slower. Object B seems to be going too faster because I'm moving towards it. And then we get a new set of momentums. It's 12 and negative 12, equal and opposite to each other, so they add up to zero. So you can see in this special reference frame, the momentum of the whole system is zero, and the velocity of the center of mass is zero. You get a kinetic energy of 36 and 24, which adds up to 60, and the relative speed is still 10. So we pointed out uh, the other day that the relative speed is the same in every reference frame. Um, but the momentum isn't. Okay, so this is nice. We're in a different reference frame with different apparent velocities, different apparent momentums, different apparent kinetic energies, but the same relative speed and the same masses. Okay, so what can we do in this reference frame? Can we figure out what's gonna happen in the collision in this reference frame? Let's remember that the E was 0.5. So let's go back to the whiteboard, the one with the collision calculation on it, and redo this. So in this special reference frame, the momentum isn't 10, it's five. I'm sorry, not five, it's zero. Ha, momentum is zero. And the relative speed is still going to become five because the E is 0.5. And I can still um, kind of cheat and know that this is the, the solution of the two that I want because the sign of that relative velocity changes from positive to negative. So V1 is V2 minus five. And then I want, Um, I substitute in the V2 minus five, that has to equal zero now. That equals zero. That means this equals 10. And in this new reference frame, I get that the velocity of object two or B is um, not four, but two meters per second. And object one is uh, two minus five is negative three. So I have the right relative speed. This is gonna give me the right momentum of zero for the whole system. So let's go back over to the calculator here and then scroll over to the right. And you can see that indeed, it does have a velocity of negative three for object A, positive two for object B. Momentum still adds up to zero as it has to. Kinetic energy is now nine and six and 15, and the relative speed is five. Okay, so I just calculated what's gonna happen in the collision in a different reference frame, so what? Okay, there's a nice little shortcut here. This is really important. So what was the E? It was 0.5. What's the relationship between this V of negative three, oops, and the original one? it's negative 0.5 of that. Negative 0.5 times six 
is negative 3. Negative 0.5 times negative 4 is positive 2. There we go. And you can see the, the cell calculation is taking the original speed in the center of mass reference frame and multiplying it by the E, which is coming from a cell up above, and sticking a negative in front so that it turns around. Okay, the shortcut is in the center of mass reference frame, the new velocities are negative E times the old velocities. It doesn't get simpler than that. Let me show it on the whiteboard again so that you can remember it. In the center of mass reference frame, so the new velocity of A is negative E times the original velocity of A. And VB final is negative E times VB initial in the CM frame, which the book also calls the zero momentum reference frame, the special reference frame in which the momentum, the total momentum of the system is zero and the center of mass isn't moving. So what does this get us? Let's go back to the whiteboard. OK, so I've, I've zoomed out so we can see a little bit better, but I'm still going to have to kind of move around. So the idea is you first you set up your before table, like we've done a whole bunch of times in the, uh, on the collision sheets. You figure out the velocity of the center of mass. Then you transform all of this before stuff into the center of mass reference frame, which has new velocities and new momentums and new kinetic energies. But the important property that the total momentum of the system is zero and the center of mass isn't moving. Then you solve the system and figure out what's going to happen in this collision in the center of mass reference frame, where all you have to do is take the old velocities and multiply them by negative E to get the new velocities, that gives you the momentums and the kinetic energies. And then you translate it back into the original reference frame here by adding those two meters per second of the velocity of the center of mass back in. So negative three plus two is negative one, two plus two is four, and you get a new, uh, the same after table that we got before, but you have it in a simpler way where you don't have to solve the system of equations. So take your system, find the velocity of the center of mass, translate the system into the center of mass reference frame, solve the center of mass reference frame where it's easy to solve, translate it back into the original reference frame. And then we can notice some really important properties that um, the change in kinetic energy is negative 45 in the original reference frame and in the center of mass reference frame. So the amount of energy that is lost is the same in both reference frames. That's important because the amount of damage that gets done in the collision, which is what that delta Ke is, can't depend on what the observer is doing. That's independent of the, of the observer. We also have this idea of the kinetic energy of the center of mass. So the kinetic energy of the center of mass, you can figure out by taking the total mass times the velocity of the center of mass squared times one half, you get 10 joules. So that's how much energy the center of mass has in the original reference frame. In the center of mass reference frame, it has zero joules because the center of mass isn't moving. Okay. In the original reference frame, there was 70 joules total in the system 10 of it is the center of mass kinetic energy. That means there's 60 joules that could be conceivably converted into heat and sound and destruction and so on in the collision because they're not stuck in the center of mass, which isn't allowed to change what it's doing. In the center of mass reference frame, the center of mass doesn't have any energy, so all of the energy that's there is convertible. 
could be converted. Because the E is 0.5 and not 0, it doesn't all get converted into heat, just 75% of it. And you can see that the percentage of that convertible that gets lost is the same in both reference frames. It's 75% lost in both reference frames. But the percent of the total that gets lost is different in the two reference frames because the total amount of energy is different in the two reference frames. It's 75% in the center of mass reference frame and 64% in the uh, original reference frame. OK, so there's two, I think, in general, important things here. One is this concept and trick of the center of mass reference frame makes it really easy to solve what's going to happen in collisions. So that's a very useful thing to do. Secondly, there's something really deep going on about um, how different reference frames have some things that are different about them and some things that are the same. And it allows us to understand something about what's happening with the energy that gets lost and not lost in a collision.